Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we are looking at the EHI MCF930 Command Module Mark 1, which is this thing right here. So this ship and quite a few other ships that the creator has made are essentially a line of freighters that can all be connected up to each other and connected up to these different types of components for you to drag along through space or through planets. They all come with this little almost universal connection point at the very back like so which can be connected up to say this cargo container part thingy mob bob and you can drag it across the universe and deliver your goods to wherever it needs to go. So pressing F10 and finding the EHI MC there it is nope that's the cargo pod we needed the MCF. There it is. So this ship weighs in at 1,092 large blocks. It requires the decorative block DLC pack, so if you don't have them, you'll have a few block missing on this ship. But it shouldn't be too disastrous if you don't own it. So starting at the very front here, what can we see? Well, we've got our main little cockpit area with some LCD screens on there telling you everything going on with the ship. Yes, we've got two flight seats as well, so your co-pilot can take over if you don't want to do it. Below that we've got some flashing red lights and all the way below there we've of course got our ramming spike, the antenna, to guide your way. We then have some nice little block work coming around with two spotlights on either side and just up there a little light just to add a bit of flair to it. Coming around the side at the very bottom we've got a logo of the developer's little naming of the series of ships. And we can see just there a laser antenna. And as we come along inside, we can see some nice block work. It's nothing too fancy, but it does stop it from being a plain square ship. As we can see, as we come across to these windows, the DLC blocks make their appearance. So there's a bed and there's a table. We have a little platform there to get inside the ship, which is just some catwalks on the little half-ended, half-slope block thingy with bobs. I can't remember what their names are. But these come across on these little struts that go to our first thruster pod. Yes, this ship has four little thruster pods, so if you were to enter combat and one of them got damaged, it's still going to be good at flying. But yes, these thruster pods are simply the rounded armored blocks that come across to some nice white, yellow, and green stripes. And yes, they just house all the little thrusters you need to get around. Moving across to the back of the ship past the door, we can see some more rounded blocks, more half edge, some more of those weird little intermittent corner block things, and we've got a interior turret just to give you a little bit of protection. There's not too many guns on this, so you're not really going to fend off too much. It's more of a deterrence to stop players from coming near you. Moving towards the very back of the ship, this is where our universal connector point for all our trailers and other ships in the series are going to connect up to you. So we've got our connector in the middle to ensure all the goods can be transferred to and from our trailer or opposite ship. Two merge blocks for extra protection to make sure we're going to be really connected to that ship. We've got a camera so we can see ourselves reversing, which is very nice. We've got four flashing red lights and we have a small button panel there which I can't access just yet, but they are going to be for the controls of these. We've got some thin LCD screens with a warning label on them just for an added bit of decoration. We've got another interior turret. Then coming up and above we've got some more flashing lights, another logo on an LCD screen and a proper Gatling turret to help protect yourself. Coming down and underneath we can see our laser antenna being all nice there. We've got some more lights and we got another logo. No protection from underneath, which could be a problem in the long run if a sneaky pirate decides to come up and under you. But then again, because you're a transport ship, it wouldn't be out of the world to have a escort coming with you. Now this is what you get with this single download, but there are other stuff on the workshop which are in the same series where you get this little trailer here which has a lot of cargo containers inside it for you to store goods and haul it across the galaxy. There's hydrogen tanks, there's special drop pods and all that, other types of ships for you to use and connect up to. They all have the same universal connector, so you could just go nuts. They're all on the same workshop page, there's just like a link at the top for you to go and do. Yes, taking control of my character, let's just scoot around to the back and I'll show you this little panel here. So we've got a little, little half block for us to stand on. 
and we got the disconnect the module so if we press this one this will trigger a timer block and will disconnect the connector and both the merge blocks. We then have 2, 3 and 4 which are for connecting up but I'm not going to touch them just yet. So to get in we have to come in through the only door on this ship which is on this side here where we have our catwalks to stand on, ta-da, and where we can walk through into our airlock. Now there is an air vent in there so I'm just letting all the air go out but the door will automatically close after a certain amount of time which means Whip's door and auto airlock is active on this ship. So opening up the door coming through we get some blinking red lights and the air vent is right above us. We have a cargo container for us to store a few stuff in if we want to but at the moment of spawning it in it's just filled with 42,000 ice. Coming through this door the lights will start flashing red and then we can pass through and just close it up and this is the first room that greets us. So it's like our little recreation area where we have some chairs, a little corner chair to sit on, our sofa to sit on and behind us we've got our kitchen to go and cook our food. We have a button there which allows us to access one of the cargo containers which has 976 ammo inside it. To the left and that, a survival kit for a quick recharge and two cryopods if you want to be lazy. Moving around and coming through this blue door, we come to another intersection. So we got some more DLC blocks there, so there's the corner chair for you to sit on. We got our planter and we have a doorway here. Opening up this doorway comes to the bedrooms where we have two beds where one window can view the gyroscopes and the other one views outside. We have a little table to ponder our existence. Moving around past this door, we can come back through here, see the gyroscope that was through that window, and we've got some LCD screens, which will tell us everything that's going on with our cargo and our auction tanks and all that. Coming through the grey door, we've got our toilet. Yes, we just come and sit on this toilet. I never actually realised there was a proper hole on that one. Anyway, yes, we've got our toilet there, where we can just come through and do your business. And then we can come up the stairs, but we can see there is a beacon in there if you want to turn that on or off. Up the steps, we got our armory and our lockers. So we can store our goods in there. What do we have? We got some medikits, we got some power kits, and yes. Quite a lot of stuff on this ship. In fact, was that almost 2,000 ammunition I saw in there? That is, that's a bloody lot of ammo. But we can keep going up these steps. Above us is a auction tank, so we can see if that's full or not, thanks to those little green bars. And we've got another way we can go. The yellow door is going to take us to the important stuff. Yes, the stuff you really want to keep safe. Our hydrogen engines, our refineries, and all the good stuff like the reactors. But we've got an LCD screen there, telling us our power setting is a bit blurry. Not too sure what's happening there. Yes, we can see the power of our batteries, our uranium, and we can see our modules, hydrogen engines, if they're on or off, and all that. So walking down, we've got some more cargo containers, we've got our oxygen tank, we can see some conveyors, some batteries, another air vent, and some programmable blocks. So we've got the interface mainframe, which is what is showing us on the LCD screens, or the inventory and all that, and then we have the automatic door control, which is how the airlock is working. Moving along and to the front of the ship, I do like the yellow light in here. It's something I always forget to do on my ships is change the light colours because it does add a little bit extra to certain rooms. So yes, opening up this door and not getting closed in it, we can come through the blue door to the cockpit. Yes, the cockpit has two flight seats on there and some small LCD screens on there. Tell me what's going on. So we've got some speed, acceleration, location. We can see the charge, no block found and the stop distance, stop time, and the ground meters. Yes, so it doesn't matter which seat we go in, they're both going to be the same. We've got some LCD screens behind us showing us what we saw in the other room. Bring into here, first person. We got a few options. So number one is the camera at the very back of the ship if we want to connect this up. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So we're just gonna come up to here. Oh, it's, it's very weird reversing onto stuff. And there we go, I've just connected myself up, which should then stop moving so it'll stop flying away. But now I've connected up to the trailer, which is a separate download. Pressing number two will disconnect everything and will turn off the merge blocks and the connector. But I'm just going to ram that back into place 
and connect myself back up. So number four and number five are for the connectors, so I can press number five, which will then lock the connectors next to those merge blocks together. We then have number six for the antenna, number seven for the beacon, so I can just turn that on, there you go, just turn that off, and number eight for the laser antenna. If I come over to tab number one, we've got a few basic options that we can use, but we're largely going to be sticking to tab number two while flying this ship. Number one is going to turn the turrets on and off. Number six is for the H2O2 generator. Number seven is for the battery to set them to recharge or to discharge. Number eight is the hydrogen engines. And number nine is for the reactors. So there is that. I like having the hydrogen engines turned off because they do make quite a lot of noise. And that is all this ship has to offer. It's a lovely design, don't you think? I do like the whole thruster pod things. It's almost like rocket pods but it is made out of thrusters. Let me just turn off those signals. They get rather annoying. But yes, this is the whole purpose of the ship is to haul these containers along and you can spawn in even more because all the containers, all the trailers even, have got the connectors on the back and the front. So you can just keep making a massive line and just fly to your destination. Now the ship doesn't contain a jump drive at all. So you will have to attach for an on if you want to, perhaps you could even just connect yourself up to a separate jump drive module and use that. But now I'm going to disconnect myself from that and fly away, because it's time to do a small thruster test. So bearing in mind that this is a hauling vessel, a freighter, it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world. But we can see there on the LCD screen, it's telling us our stopping time is about 18 seconds. One second, and there we go. Moving forwards, this is our acceleration. It's alright, it's a fairly slow start, but once it gets going, it gets a lot of speed. Stopping on the other hand is very good in fact. And then going left, going right, it's still quite slow, but then again the thruster placements are very balanced all the way around. In fact, they're identical all the way around, so we shouldn't expect anything abnormal with this ship's thruster movement. Going down, feels like we got quite a lot of speed there, and going up is a lot slower than the rest, but it's still not too bad. So turning my mouse around, it's it's very meaty. Yes, it's very meaty. It's quite slow, it's still quite responsive, but there's a lot of weight to it, and it will continue to turn once you have stopped, so it takes a little bit of time to actually get used to if you like flying small ships. But as for that, it's a lovely ship if you wish to do hauling for the new economy update. Perhaps you just go and land your trailer, spawn in the hydrogen version of the ship of the workshop, go to a trade station, load yourself up with a bunch of goods, and then go and connect yourself up to a jump drive module and jump to wherever the cargo needs to go. But as for that, I think it's a great ship design and I might steal the thruster pod idea for one of my ships. So it'll be in the description below if you wish to download and try it yourself. And I'll be back with another showcase video, one of your showcase videos, tomorrow. Bye bye.